Hello everyone, welcome to another exchange video. My name is Ed and in this video we are continuing with the exchange 2013-2019 coexistence lab. So in part one we discussed what we're going to set up. Uh, we're going to be now performing part two where we're actually going to promote our Windows 2016 server to a domain controller. So as you can see this server is part of a work group, nothing's been done to it. Um, it doesn't have a static IP uh, assigned to it because obviously this is a lab, but best practice is obviously to assign a static IP to a domain controller. So without further ado, we are going to start with installing the roles for domain controller. So first thing you do, server manager will launch automatically when you uh, log into the virtual machine or to a physical machine and obviously once it's gone through all its checks everything then you'll be able to click on the add roles and features section so we're going to click next we're doing role based installation next this is a server you can see um, that's my IP I don't know what that black box just came up on something running on the machine because I just booted it up and what we're going to do is we're going to select Active Directory Domain Services. So when you select that, it comes up with this and asks you, do you want to add the features required? So I'm going to click on Add Features. You can now see it's selected. We click Next. We don't need anything on here right now. We're going to click Next. We're not joining this to Azure AD. And then we're going to basically start the installation. So installation should be pretty quick. So this is my 2016 domain controller to recap in Azure that I'm busy building. You can see it's installing the domain services now that we've selected. We will obviously then point DNS on our other two servers, Exchange 2013 and 2019 to this server so that we can uh, join them to the domain once this domain is active. So the nice thing is with Server 2016 and Server 2019 is that we can promote the server pretty much immediately to a domain controller. We don't have to reboot first. So when we're done here, there'll be like a link underneath here if you are new to setting up domain controllers. For Exchange, obviously to be able to work, it needs an Active Directory environment and as explained in part one, we're doing Exchange 2013, 2019 coexistence. And you're wondering why I'm not running Server 2019, because Exchange 2013 does not support Server 2019 domain controllers. So you have to be careful on things that you want to install and make sure that you adhere to what is allowed for Exchange obviously to function correctly. So now that you can see it's completed successfully, we can now do the configuration. So we're going to click this link. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new forest. And I'm going to call this uh, tlab.local. Going to click Next. The forest and functional, sorry, the forest functional level and domain functional level can be on 2016 because Exchange does support it, 2013 and 2019. And we're obviously going to make this a domain name system, which is DNS server. It is going to be a global catalog. So obviously now I'm going to put in a password. And I'll put in the password again. That's to obviously to recover if I need to, and then I click next. We're not going to worry about this section. Click next. Now, obviously, it's going to give us the NetBIOS domain name, which it will come up with as TLab. Just give it a second. There you go. You can change this to whatever you want to, and you click next. Now, normally, on the next tab where the path is. 
I normally change the directory here to a E drive or a D drive or whatever and I keep it off the C drive but as this is a lab I'm not going to go and add additional storage or anything else like that um, we'll just leave it as a default I'm going to click next and on this screen now you can obviously view everything that you've selected and we click next and it's going to do a prerequisite check now so it will probably warn us that we don't have a static IP and what the first warning you can see is that 2016 domain controllers have a default for security settings which is allow cryptography algorithms um, you can see it's complaining about the static IP and as I mentioned best practice to add a static IP I'm not going to in this case because the IP doesn't change and I don't have a DHCP server running here so I'm now going to click install and this is pretty much going to go and install the group policy management console it's going to you know set up everything for us it's obviously now busy doing the DNS installation and once it's finished it'll obviously go and replicate everything the paths and the zones and this normally takes a couple of minutes uh, depending on how powerful your machine is these installations are, are pretty quick um, you can script these installations as well uh, we're not going to do this in this lab uh, we can do that in a, in a later lab so this is normally quick you I don't have the the fastest machine here but it's good enough to do what I needed to do you can see I'm running uh, let's just change this to logical I've got four processors and I've got 16 gigs of RAM in a lab environment it's perfect you don't need anything bigger than that you're just wasting resources but in the production environment obviously you want to look at um, more CPUs and obviously pumping up the RAM as well so you can see my CPU is a little bit busy I'm not too concerned about that which is normal for this and it should almost be done with this TNS installation and if we head over to the you can basically see uh, under the start menu under Windows Administrative Tools uh, DNS is not in here but you can see the group policy management um, option is available for you now let's just give this a couple more minutes so while we wait for this um, what we're going to be doing in the third part is we're going to actually go and join our 2013 um, server to the domain and then obviously we'll log in with an account that has all the access needed to install exchange obviously schema enterprise and domain admin obviously in a lockdown environment you won't have a user account just sitting with elevated access but it's required for the installation so you can just leave it on for now and in your lab it's fine you can leave it on to test and play with and then once we've done um, the joining of the domain for 2013 we will then install the prerequisites as mentioned before we actually even get to the 2019 server there's a couple of things that we have to do so you can see this is taking a little bit longer um, than it normally does if you are new to this it is busy in the background so don't go and restart the server now because you think nothing's happening everything is running fine here it's just because the server has less resources than what you normally would throw in it but because it's the lab it doesn't really matter once this installation is done it will obviously then go through and replicate everything else and then it will sign us out reboot the the server and then we will have a domain controller and the login with the account that you obviously logged in locally will become the 
administrator account or you can go and create another administrator account if you wanted to if you don't want to use the main administrator account so I'm going to stop the video now this is pretty much going to end in a couple of minutes once it's done all this installation and reboot and then in the next video which is part three we'll come back and join our 2013 service domain thank you very much for watching